Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and uh, this is another episode of Building Products with JS Special, which um, I again want to talk about one of the side tools, but this time around I want to use it as a reference point. So you might have heard about the tool called Now from Inside. It's uh, essentially a deployment slash hosting tool that allows you for real time uh, global deployments with very simple command line interface. So the idea is that you can take Docker, Node, or static website and deploy it with literally one command and then do all the configuration afterwards. It's very powerful, it's pretty cool. It works very nicely. It's uh, not that expensive. Uh, my problem with it is that you cannot run it on your own hardware, right? So they do work towards that kind of, I think they're more working towards clouds or the latest update has added support for uh, Google Cloud Platform, AWS, Azure, whatever you can imagine. All those clouds are nice. But the thing is that I, and I imagine a bunch of other people, work in the places that has demo servers. I have my own VPS. I have my own dedicated servers when I run my demos. And you know, I want something as nice for this stuff. So today I wanna show you a project I've been working on for quite some time now. It's called Exaframe and um, it's now in beta. And basically I wanna show you the beta version. So uh, before I talk about how it works, I wanna show uh, first show you uh, what exactly it does. So I'm gonna start a server. It has two parts, the server and client. So we're gonna copy paste that Docker based code. It all runs inside of a Docker. So again, I'm gonna talk about how exactly it works after I show you the demo. And then uh, I'm gonna walk you through, you know, the way it works. So for, before we start it, I'm gonna copy the lines there and uh, configure them a bit. So first of all, I have to give it, uh, um, wait a second, what was it? The user slash yama. So I, I'm gonna give it the folder where the config is. So it's gonna be uh, my root folder plus dot exaframe. I need to give it my SSH public keys, authorized keys file that is gonna be used for authentication. Uh, private key is used for the token generation. So it's gonna be something unique in this case, I don't care. So I'm gonna leave it here like this. Uh, I'm gonna assign it host exaframe.dev. This is something I have locally. So I have the uh, DNS mask that basically takes any requests that go to .dev domain and point them to localhost. So it's basically gonna be, you know, nicer domain. And then we got an exaframe server here. So I'm gonna docker pull exaframe server from uh, repository. This is the latest one. Uh, it's quite small, so it's just like 40, 50 megs. Uh, this includes the Docker Compose and the uh, Exaframe server itself. It's gonna take a few seconds to pull it. Come on. Right, so after that, I am gonna take all of this and start a server. So if we have a look at my Docker daemon. Ah, oh, come on, why am I so bad at this? There we go. So now I have server running and it has a traffic running. I'm gonna talk about that a bit later. Right, so how does it work? Well, we're gonna go to the browser over here and I'm gonna, I have a bunch of projects prepared here. So we're gonna start with a simple HTML project. So as you can see here, I have on the index HTML. Uh, let me make a font size even bigger, I guess. People was complaining that my font size is not big enough. So please do let me know if that's still small enough. I increased it everywhere a notch, but let's go. So I have my index HTML. This is just a simple index file. And uh, before we can deploy it, I gotta say that our endpoint is um, exoframe.dev. So I point it towards my endpoint, which can be anywhere in the server. And then I say login, right? So because we want to authenticate, um, I'm gonna be Yamalite and I'm gonna point to my private key and enter my passphrase. There you go. So now what I can do to deploy it, I just say exoframe. This will automatically upload it, pick a correct Docker file, deploy it, and even assign the subdomain URL. So this is something you can configure in your diamond and I'll talk about it later. If I click that, we'll see our index HTML and it works as expected, right? Very simple. Now, Node project. So Node.js projects, again, this one is very simple. Let me open the code here just to show you. Uh, so here we have a node project. It has a start script, which is node index. Very simple. It has Express's dependency and the uh, index file is just hello world from Express, right? Very straightforward. Right, so again, exaframe and this is gonna deploy it. Again, this is gonna assign it a URL. It's gonna build it and we're gonna see it in a second here. Very fast, very easy. Um, redeploying it is just as easy. Now, cool thing. Um, no, we're, we're gonna show you on a Docker project, right? So the next one is Docker file. So uh, now that is not what I wanna do. There's a Docker file. I'm gonna open the code again here. As you can see here, this is just an Nginx, right? So 
This is going to say welcome to Nginx among those lines. Um, again, all of those features right now are basically one-on-one -on -one copy from now shell. Um, and uh, let me show you how you can configure it. So we're going to say exaframe config. It's going to ask us Docker project sounds fine. We're going to assign it a domain. We're going to say it's going to be under nginx.dev and we're going to say um, hello world as environment. Although, you know, you can already access it, but you can set environment uh, as many as you want. We're not going to send any host names. You can deploy uh, databases using Exaframe and then you want to send, you know, you want to make it available to all your Docker containers. You're going to send it to home. Uh, you're going to assign it a host name. We're not going to do that. And for restart policy, we're going to say I don't want to restart it. So right now it's created this Exaframe.json, which has all this config, which you can easily edit yourself with, you know, any editor. It's quite straightforward. So now once I run Exaframe, it's going to publish it and we're going to see our nginx under nginx.dev there you go very easy now if we look at uh deployments so we're going to see that we still have our html project deployed under here we have our node project, uh, node project deployed here and we have our nginx project deployed here obviously you can see logs if you need to so here for nginx we can see that you know somebody accessed it there's uh, somebody tried to get favico uh, which failed and so on and so forth. So basically you can easily get logs and obviously you can easily remove them um, This will clean up everything related to the project and now we don't have the nginx anymore And if we reload that it was going to say 404 not found Right uh, now we come to the cool part. Uh, let me first clean up uh, This stuff. Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm using the alias that I have for exaframe, which is called exo um, I could not call the project exo because there is already a tool called exo in Linux ecosystem. So it's exo frame, but you can still alias it. That's what I did. So basically if I look at my alias, you will see that it's just exo exo frame. So don't be scared when I do that. Okay. Here comes the cool part that is not possible to do with now shell, the compose project deployment, right? So here I have this simple Docker compose project, uh, that deploys the WordPress, right? So it has two services. It has the WordPress itself, which is Apache and PHP. Uh, container and it has a MySQL, which is a MariaDB container. You need to deploy both of them, but you only need to expose one. And this is actually one of the limitations of Exaframe because it's not possible for the command line tool to actually know which one of the services you want to assign the um, host to. You will have to do it yourself using the traffic labels. I'm going to talk about that a bit later again. Uh, so what you're going to do here is exactly the same. You just say Exaframe. It's going to upload the whole thing uh, on the server. So it's going to execute, tweak a bit the Docker Compose file to make sure it's on the same network as the um, Exaframe traffic that handles the routing. And then once the WordPress is loaded, you should actually, come on, it does take some time to load. There we go. You will actually see the WordPress installation and, you know, which you can configure, tweak, set up, whatever you want. So this is basically functioning WordPress. Obviously, since the compose file is very simple, it's not going to persist anything. So if I close it and delete it, you're not going to get any persistent data. But all of this is tweakable because this is your hardware and your server. Right. And uh, again, in exactly the same way, you can get the logs from WordPress. You can get the logs from database. Obviously, all of that works. And, uh, you know, just as you expect. Right. So let's talk about how exactly it works. Well, there are two parts uh, or actually three parts to the architecture of the exaframe. Part number one, as you might imagine, is a command line tool. It's very straightforward. You install it with npm install minus g exaframe. You point it to your endpoint and then you just use a bunch of commands. Uh, again, exaframe help shows you everything you need to know. Uh, obviously, there is a server that handles all the deployment for you. And the way the server works is number one, it will connect to your Docker socket. So you have to link it during the creation to your Docker socket. Right now it only works with the socket, but you know, in future it can work with Swarm or with anything because I just use the remote API, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, number two, you give it your uh, config folder. This is not mandatory, but if you want to persist or change your configuration, you do have to give it a folder, some folder. Number three, you give it your authorized keys. So uh, the line of thought was pretty simple. You know, all the servers that I own, all the servers that we have in the, at work use SSH keys for authentication. And you always have this authorized keys file on the server where you can input your public key and then use your private key to log in. 
So ExaFrame server does exactly that. It uses the public and private key pairs to authenticate you and generate a JSON web token that will be then used for um, authorization of the actions, right? And Exa private key is actually what J, uh, JWT uses for uh, generating these tokens. Right, so then you have two labels that are assigned to traffic. Uh, one of them is a backend label just for sanity. And the other one is a front end rule that uh, says that this should be the host name for the Exaframe server. So for example, I have my, uh, yeah, if we go to exaframe.dev, the one that I set up in the beginning, you will see that this is the Exaframe. And uh, then we say name and then we launch the server, that's it. So once it's started, it will start the traffic that I've, men I've mentioned already multiple times. So traffic is, uh, Modern HTTP reverse proxy load balancer with support for HTTPS, uh, load balancing, round robin, whatever you can. I mean, basically it has a lot of stuff, right? You might not even need all of that, but it's very good. WebSockets, HTTP2, Let's Encrypt, whatever you can imagine, all is there. It's really good. And the rules are very flexible. So you can even root services. Um, let me increase the size here. You can even route the services to paths. So like, you know, you wanna, you wanna have one service at API domain com and the other service at domain com slash service, right? So you can do that with traffic. It's pretty flexible, way more flexible than Nginx proxy companion that I showed you some time ago. And it works perfectly well with Swarm, Mesos, whatever other cloud solutions you might imagine. Um, makes it great. So uh, yeah, basically traffic handles all your domains and HTTPS and you know, example is I now I am now running my own website with I mean, it's bare bones, but they uh, using this setup. So it is my static website using Exaframe using HTTPS through Let's Encrypt and traffic. And as you can see, the certificate here is good. Zero effort to do that, really great. Um, Project is now in beta. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be more things that are gonna break, but I would be happy to hear your opinion about, you know, what do you think about it? Maybe there are some problems you have. Maybe you wanna use it. Um, all the configuration of client and server are done through the YAML files. So this is, uh, the docs have all the descriptions of currently, have all the currently available fields. They are pretty straightforward, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, feel free to try and, and let me know what you think. Also, let me know what you think about the size of the text on the screen, because I, as I said, again, I tweaked it. Maybe that's still too small. I can tweak it more, but you know, we'll see how it goes. So this was Exaframe. Uh, there's a link in the description to Medium article that uh, goes in a bit more details of how exactly it all works, if you're interested. Uh, I'm gonna link to GitHub, obviously, as well. So please do try it and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and as usual, I see you next time. Bye.